Welcome back to Diary of a Speed Reader. Today's book is In Love with the World by Yongi Mingor, and I'm gonna give it five stars. Now, I really wanted to be in positivity this week, so that's what we're gonna do, meditation, positivity, and the mind. And this book has gotta be one of my favorites that I've ever read on the topic of meditation. Yogi Mingor is an amazing person who has been a monk since a very young age, and he is telling us about how meditation prepared him for what he thought was going to be his death, but somehow magically he healed from it and um, he is spreading his beautiful message to the world. There's so much to learn and I'm going to give you three takeaways. But first, if you've enjoyed Diary of a Speed Reader, we are getting closer and closer to my 100. And after that, I'm going to post on YouTube. It would mean a lot to me if you've enjoyed this for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Diary of a Speed Reader. I'll put it in my bio, but also you can just go to YouTube and search Diaries of a Speed Reader and I should come up. Uh, now let's get into why this book is so magical. Now the first thing is that this book really clearly describes bardo, which is the gap. And you know, a lot of times when people talk about meditation, they're just like, clear your mind, clear your mind, it will be so great, like a reset, etc. There's actually a little bit more to it, and that's this bardo, and it's this idea of what nothingness actually is. See, life is the gap between death and the period that also is kind of like death, nothingness. And understanding that state of nothingness is really going to be key to appreciating what it is that you actually fill your life with. So when you reacquire the Bardot and you understand what that nothingness is, then you can fully appreciate what you're doing to yourself to fill each moment. Second, I feel like he does an amazing job at describing the importance of breathing. And you know, a lot of times people are just like concentrate on the breath, kind of you're like, why am I concentrating? I don't understand. He talks about the fact that in the gap there is nothingness and the breathing actually is the one thing that tells you that you have this awareness um, despite the nothingness that if you just are not even breathing and aware of your breathing that you've actually done something that is not meditation you've drifted into sleep land you've gone somewhere else but you aren't in the moment which is kind of the point if you're going to fill the moment you have to at least be in the moment to know what you're filling it with and he's probably doing a better job of articulating it uh, for me it actually finally clicked and made sense now, the last thing which i think is great and can never be reiterated enough is the idea of being comfortable with negative emotions now this is not expressing your negative emotions on other people okay like that's not what he's talking about this is an awareness of what it feels like so that you don't have fear of feeling that negative emotion and then through that feeling of what it feels like you can finally gain emotional control the way he describes it in every single one of these points is far better than I can, so I really encourage you to take a look at the book. That's why I'm giving it five stars. But for me, this click. Speed reading stats, this book is 288 pages. It took me 45 minutes to read. Do not skip the glossary in the back, or at least be aware there is one if you're reading this, because I think sometimes having a monk define the terms in his words um, versus like hearing it kind of secondhand or hearing it on the internet is gonna be great, particularly if you're doing your meditation practice. Um, without um, a lot of additional knowledge or help or guidance. I want to actually thank my building for having a lending library downstairs. It's basically a place where everybody can put books that they no longer want in their tiny little New York apartment. I always take those books and then bring them to places where books are super valuable. This book I gave to someone on the plane since I read it on a flight from Bangalore to Mumbai where I am right now. And I told him because he was like, I can't take your book. I feel so bad. I'm like, pass it on. Karma is the whole point so if you've got books and you're traveling consider just leaving them for someone else to enjoy it if it was meaningful and special to you anyways thank you for liking sharing commenting or otherwise uh, supporting my diary of the speed reader stuff I will see you tomorrow